is that light on again? Damn. Is that default light? Bullshit. I keep turning it off. <clears throat> Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, I see that uh, Chevy Cheeseburger expressed his feelings on his model cars, on, on, on the brands. And, you know, I think a lot of us will agree with it. I don't know everything that went on. You know, I, I don't know the other... Uh, person he is referring to. I don't think I subscribe to him. I don't even know if he subscribes to me. But uh, uh, I'll get straight to the point. Um, I've been building for a long, long time. And uh, I primarily build AMT kits. Uh, the uh, I started out building AMT kits and I ran into some crap. Uh, you're going to do that. You know, each Every company is going to have that one kit or two kits that's crap. Uh, just like a MPC. MPC makes a 67 Pontiac GTO kit. Um, it's the one that says MPC on it. And it's got a big blue Pontiac 67 GTO shitty kit on it. Um, that kit is so poor. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. The fitment for the grill to the body doesn't line up. Um, the, the rear quarter panels had flash built into it. I had to do so much work to make this kit look presentable. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a shitty kit. Most people would have been like, fuck it. Uh, you give me a kit, I'll build it. You know, bottom line, uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit. That's why we have the mock-up process. That's why we have, you know, you know, multiple mock-ups. But, you know, I, I have noticed with the uh, uh, Monogram or Revell kits, they seem to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit better pieces, better quality, of course. Um, and, 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 you know, like Cheeseburger said, you know, um, if you want a kit, you're going to buy the kit because you want that car. Uh, you know, I, you know, there's, that's what kit bashing is for. You know, if the body's good and the parts are shitty, buy another brand, you know, another, you know, combine them so you get the, the better quality kit in the long run. Uh, like this uh, Lindbergh Ford Cougar. It's a garbage kit. Bottom line, the kit is garbage. Uh I mean, the fitment on it is terrible. The design of it is terrible. The 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 way the 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 chroming was done, or whatever the plating on the plastic, it was terrible. Uh, it's a garbage kit. Bottom line. I mean, it's got some cool features like the roll up windows, which is kind of cool, you know. But it's a garbage kit, you know. And if I was gonna build it, I would keep the chassis and I put a different rear end in there and a different front end on there. Uh, you know, as far as the suspension and the drivetrain is concerned. Uh, but it, it, it looks cool, but it, it, it's, it's garbage. I wouldn't recommend anybody buy it unless you really like that car and you really want to build it. Um, but, you know, a majority of the kits I build are AMT. I grew up building them, so I've, I've destroyed a lot of AMT kits. I mean, <laughs> I've destroyed a lot of kits. And, uh, you know, I, I'm 37 now. And, you know, I started building, you know, shit seriously when I got into my teens. So when I was about 13, I started getting serious with it. And, uh, you know, it was uh, kid after kid after kid, you know, inexperience, uh, which is the one thing, you know. Uh, but, yeah, you know, some kids are shitty. Uh, it, it, I guess because I've always built AMT kits, a lot of AMT kits, um, I expect those problems. I, I would expect those problems with any kit, unfortunately, because it is resin and it's just shot out, you know, on a fucking conveyor belt, you know, and, uh, you know, I expect to, to do some kind of sanding and some kind of fixing and some kind of something, uh, except with the trumpeter kits, uh, those trumpeter kits, man, they went together like butter. Oh my God, those pieces fit so perfect. I didn't have to do anything on the kit. <laughs> like he said, the kit, like, Cheeseburger said the kit assembled itself. I, all I had to do was paint it. Uh, and yeah, both those trumpeter kits are also higher dollar kits. I mean, these AMT kits, you know, I don't buy nothing brand new. And if I do, I use a coupon, you know, either at uh, Michael's, I use a coupon or uh, there's a guy that's local, uh, Bob Klein, and he sells kits for, you know, regular kit for 15 bucks. And some of them are vintage kits. So you can't pass up a $15 kit, you know, regardless of what it is. And, you know, kits nowadays are 22, 25 bucks for a decent one. Uh, so, you know, that, that's how I do it. But, yeah, man, I think a lot of us, 
if we come again, we come across problems, we know how to fix the problems. We know how to sand. A lot of new beginners don't realize that they have to sand. They don't realize that things might have to be modified because uh, they just went and bought the kit and they think it's just going to slap together like a puzzle. They don't slap together like a puzzle. Well, the trumpeter kits did. Man, those trumpeter kits are nice. <laughs> just the overall quality, even the packaging, the way they do it. I mean, it's nice quality stuff. That was like the Cadillac of models from what I've seen. I, I've never tried very many other brands of models. I think Kamaya makes models, uh, but they usually make imports. I'm not really big into building imports. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, man, I think it, it just matters on the, the modeler's experience. And, and, like, I think I keep falling off is, uh, I started with shit so I could build anything now, uh, any brand, I guess, if you want to say. AMTs, all of them haven't been bad. The 55, Shep, step side I did, the, the Angry Smurf, that was an AMT kit. Um, let me see, the uh, uh, the Chevy I'm working on, that Rat Rod, that's an AMT kit. Um, the Ford Steak, that's an AMT kit. The Restoration Progress, that's an AMT kit. Um, let me see, I got... My 50 Chevy, I mean 50 Ford AMT, Impala Coupe AMT, I got a bunch of Ravel, 50, Whoa! 51 Chevy AMT, you know, I, I, I think that the, the problem is, is, you know, when you look at Ravel, you know, I think I noticed also Ravel is starting to carry a lot of kits that, that AMT used to carry, I think the licensing may have changed, uh, because, you know, I see the uh, 64 Impala by Ravel now, uh, which I have one also, which I built that as a, for AMT many years ago, and, uh, I mean, it was a decent kit, lackluster, if anything, but it was a great kit, but, man, why are my kids screaming? Ah! I'll be back. That light's on again. Why is it doing that? What? Man, there's some BS on here then. It must have been something. Oh, it's on automatic. That was my bad. That was my bad. All right, anyway. I don't remember what I was saying, but, uh... Yeah, you give me a kit, I'll build it. And, yeah, AMT, you know, it made a few bum kits. So does every other company. Everybody makes a bum kit. For someone starting out... You know, it gets discouraging if you build a kit that's kind of shitty. You know, you're not going to want to build anymore. Uh, my, all my kits when I was a kid weren't, you know, as good as they are now. I mean, and I'm not great, you know, but it, it, I think there's also, it has to be a love of the hobby, a love of cars to continue to drive you to build. I mean, I first got introduced to building when I was five years old. You know, my grandmother bought a kit uh, from the from a garage sale. I think it was a van of some sort. And, you know, my mom's boyfriend at the time bought me the original Knight Rider kit. And my models, you know, I don't even remember what happened to them. I remember gluing some of the wheels on, and then it eventually disappeared. Uh, it, 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 you know, after all this time, I always go back to this. You know, I'd be out with my wife at a store. Um, at the time, we'd be at Hobby Lobby. And I'd see a model car, and I'd be like, man, it's been a long time. Let me slap one together. And and, and that's what it is, you know, really. It, it, it's a love of the hobby, I think, also. Because uh, everything isn't easy. I mean, if it was easy, there'd be more people building model cars. I mean, it, it, at times, it's not easy. At times, for some of us, even though we get frustrated, it's still easy for us, in a, in a sense. Because we know what we can we can put out there. We don't... Some of us don't question our ability. I mean, I question mine when it comes to doing things like I have never done before, you know, especially when it comes to scratch building. But, I mean, I'm jabbering on a little bit. And, uh, but yeah, uh, any case, uh, I got some updates. <laughs> so let's get back to the update. That was my two cents. I ain't mad at nobody. I ain't talking shit to anybody. I'm just saying my opinion is, my opinion is, you give somebody a kit, and yeah, it could be discouraging. And I think that's the bottom line. Um, but as of right now, here's the tanks, the gas tanks. I made them a gloss black. They were a, a plated color, and I did not like the way they looked. Uh, they looked cheap, chintzy, uh, especially when you glue them together. You couldn't get rid of the seams at all. 
Um, so I went ahead and took care of the seams and I painted them gloss black, which I think will look nice on the side. With the, it's got chrome caps on each end, so I think that'll look real nice, real clean. Uh, not overdoing it with the chrome. Uh, uh, I went ahead and 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 like <laughs> back to what uh, Chevy said about the AMT kits. They do come up with some problems from time to time. Uh, here's an example: is uh, my fifty uh, my Chevy steak. Um, I put the grill on it, okay, and it was a son of a bitch to put the grill on. There's nothing for it to really line up. I don't even want to get into it. It was a pain. Does it even look like the box? Let me take a look if it even looks like the damn box. Yeah, it looks like the box. I got it done right. Well, anyway, now since I put the, the, the bumper on there and grill, it only goes so far now. Before, I was able to give a good view of the chrome and all, everything under the engine. Now... That's as far as we can go. And I have it slightly tilted, too, so that way I can clear it when it folds over. So, you know, yeah. Uh, but I got around the problem the best I could. Don't get me wrong. It, it's going to be the best it can be. It's still functional, you know. But, uh, yeah, as a far, that's all you see right there. That's all I got so far. I'll go ahead and bring it to the camera. So there's the front end so far. Uh, I had to put a decal across the front there because I got glue on there. So that was the only way to get rid of it. I thought that was kind of cool. But this is where it's at for the most part. So you can see it'll only open so far now. See? Which is, see? Which is unfortunate. I did get rid of those problems I had. I was showing you guys right here and right there. I massaged it. I massaged it like a sausage anyway uh that's enough of the updates as of right now i think the next update will be more more process press on the 50 uh excuse me 50 wow. on the ford cougar uh and uh that's about it that's my take on it oh i'm building a bicycle look at the little bicycle you see the bicycle i'm building a little tiny 124 scale bicycle There you go. Here, we'll put it on the white screen back there. There you go. Yeah, it's quite tedious also. But uh, everybody, have a good afternoon. And I hope my video is okay so I don't have to record this one again. Uh, so uh, this would be like take number six, actually. So uh, I'm not making any more. Peace out, everybody.